Hello everybody, good afternoon, good morning if you're still in the Netherlands. My name is Guido, I am with the DBAZ and uh, as you know we are going to talk about flights and options to fly out of Vietnam and back in. Um, I'm not going to do that alone, I'm going to do that with three uh, experts. Um, this is the, the panel, the panel starts with uh, Ms. Wendy Vu, she's a sales manager at Qatar Airways. Then Evert Visser, he's DBAB board member and vice chairman at Eurocham. And Anthony Slepka is the regional sales director at Sofitel. If you have questions, then you're very welcome to ask them. We have asked for questions before the webinar and we have got many replies, so we will handle those in this session. Should you have any questions after the presentation, feel free to um, uh, send uh, to ask them in the chat and we will make sure to go over them. Sometimes we will have to cluster them, but we will most definitely try and answer all your questions. If we can't answer them during the webinar, then we will do our best to answer them at a later point. Perhaps it's also good to share with you that we will um, share all the presentations uh, and, and takeouts in a post-webinar newsletter so that you can just check all the resources in your own uh, time. Okay, so what is the today looking like? Uh, first off, it's me introducing uh, DBAV, introducing our entry permit service, um, and then the updates of this week will be gradually shared throughout the presentations. I will just let Wendy uh, talk about uh, the, the updates when it comes to flight schedules and, uh, and that type of stuff, and the same goes for Anthony and Evert. Um, for me, what I think is that we will hold presentations and they will be indeed uh, informative. So I think that could be uh, a good to start with, but we want to move on to your questions as soon as possible. That is where we uh, can really be of, uh, of help for you. Um, so this is what it looks like, but I wouldn't be surprised if we are at the prepared questions a little bit earlier. So, a little bit about the entry permit that we, uh, the entry permit service that we offer. Uh, we help people with their uh, approvals and getting into Vietnam. So that means the paperwork and accommodation and flight. There are basically four things that you need. Entry permit approval from the uh, Labor Department and the People Committee. Then you need to apply for a visa from the Immigration Department. Then you need to send out a notification to the International Quarantine Center. And lastly, you need to get your visa and health check in the, in, the, uh, in the consulate or embassy, either in Vietnam or at your home country, depending on where you are. Um, then we can also help you book your accommodation and your flight. We can do that, for example, if you decide to stay at a Sofitel hotel, we can do that together with uh, Sofitel. Or if you fly with Qatar Airways, one of the two options, then we can help you get in touch uh, more on them later. Um, Entry permit service and the rates and costs that come to it. Uh, well, first off, it's, we are a non-profit uh, uh, organization. Uh, we offer free assessments with uh, uh, where you can where you can ask all your all your questions, and we do that for free. Then, if you decide to move on with us and have us help you do your paperwork, then we have two tariffs. One is that, is that we have to charge you the fee that we get from the Vietnamese government and agents for uh, getting the paperwork done. And then after everything's done and you have entered into Vietnam, we have we charge a percentage over the combined price of flight, accommodation, and transport. But that is sort of a fee that is only going to be applied when you get into Vietnam. We have uh, got many uh, resources, uh, resources that we have placed online. The, the webpage, I will share that with you, and our colleague uh, Chin, she is in charge of the, of the entry permit service and you can check with her for all the, all the information and you can contact her on the details support at dbav.org.pn. Um, that is where you can uh, email her and then uh, you can get in touch and get a free assessment on your chances or, of getting out and getting back in and uh, seeing how you want to, uh, seeing if you want to make use of that option and if that's an option for you or not. Okay, I will now stop sharing those slides and then I will ask Miss um, Wendy of Qatar Airways to uh, 
put on her microphone. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Can you hear me well? Good afternoon. Yes, we can hear you well. Thank you. I will now mute my microphone and you can start sharing your slides. Thank you. So I, I will do it here so that uh, everyone can see it. For you, if you like. Yeah, it, maybe it, it is faster because I'm on Wi-Fi here, and uh, it's actually not the office Wi-Fi. So maybe uh, can you help with me with that first? It should be uh, maybe with the beginning slide first. Uh, Pido, yeah. Thank you. Sorry about that. Yeah. No worry. There we go. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Just ask for the next slide. Yeah. Thank you, Widow, and um, all the DBAV uh, members have uh, offered us the opportunity to speak directly with you. And uh, hopefully this is uh, not the only chance for us to see you here and then uh, talk with you, share with you about the uh, uh, travel arrangement and everything for the coming months. Everybody knows that actually now the NOSAM is actually the uh, uh, entry uh, permission into Vietnam is actually right now is restricted. And then uh, people only uh, with approvals can be allowed to enter Vietnam. So at the meantime, we uh, are happy that uh, we have made a good, good progress and uh, we actually have some success to share. Uh, just, to begin, uh, just to begin with, maybe uh, we would like to share with you uh, uh, some achievements that we have done so far. We have successfully uh, carried more than 500 uh, experts and specialists uh, since July, we started this inbound sales into Vietnam. And then uh, more than a thousand uh, Vietnamese repatriates into Vietnam at the meantime. Uh, and that is uh, the latest achievement so far. We will be uh, doing this and then bringing more customers in. And uh, hopefully you can share the news that more people can have a chance to create union with their families in Vietnam. And then again, with the support from uh, DBAV, for those who are in need, we are also ha happy to cooperate with DBAV in order to bring the customers in. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, this is the key update from us. Uh, at the meantime, as you can see, we are sharing that uh, all the entry permission right now uh, to both Ho Chi Minh City and Nanoi are actually in place. That means whoever wants to come to Vietnam uh, we need to have approval, and uh, that is very clear from the beginning. So those who really need help, uh, please contact our team so as we you will have we consult uh, with more details. Next slide, please. Thank you. Here is the uh, the contact center for Qatar Airways, Vietnam, and uh, Cambodia. Uh, for your information, uh, for May uh, this year, we already centralized the service. And uh, from now on, we will be serving you via our contact center in Vietnam. Uh, the working hours is from Monday to Friday. And uh, the email is on the screen. I'm sure that the, the slide will be shared with you after this webinar. So unless you would need further information, uh, please kindly contact me or uh, any representative from Qatar Airways directly using the contact details, the phone, and the email as on the screen. Thank you, Ms. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the most important information just to share with you uh, today is the schedule. Uh, everybody is interested to see uh, who, um, when, to when we are operating, and then uh, what the schedule might look like. This on the screen is to share with you the summer schedule uh, until uh, 24th of October, and we will continue uh, from the 25th October, uh, hopefully until uh, March next year. The latest update from uh, our side is we have already successfully get approval. 
for the lending permission into uh, Hanoi and Saigon until uh, the, the mid of December. And then uh, another slot request is coming uh, uh, and under, also under review uh, by the local authority until uh, mid January. So 100% sure that we will be operating uh, with the current schedule and frequency uh, until the mid of December. For Ho, Ho Chi Minh City, uh, we will operate daily. Um, and then from Hanoi, we have four weekly flights. Uh, and the schedule is uh, actually will be applied to you uh, with, if you have the request. Currently, it is uh, already approved until the mid of December. Uh, please kindly note that the uh, no time is actually uh, still in place. That means the entry permission into Vietnam is restricted. So the inbound into Vietnam is uh, under special arrangement, as I shared with you earlier. Uh, this is uh, to share with you about the uh, uh, coming anniversary in Hanoi in November. This is a, a very good news for us that is to confirm our commitment uh, of operation in Vietnam. That means we are operating and we continue to operate. Uh, our network to now, uh, we are coming to 100 destinations. You can check our most updated uh, connectivity on our website, or you can see it here. The majority uh, destinations in Europe are actually where we are flying to. Apart from that, we now are open to more than uh, uh, eight destinations in uh, the US again already. So happy to share with you that we are now only uh, flying to Europe. Uh, to uh, many parts of, um, uh, uh, of even Australia, and then uh, to uh, Asia. And most importantly, we already resume our service uh, to the US also. Thank you. For those who are going home uh, until the 30th of November, uh, you have a chance to book uh, the ticket at the 10% discount and the offer is uh, valid until the 30th of November. Uh, this is for uh, outbound that is going back uh, to uh, home and then we consider it's a uh, repatriation uh, traffic to now. For the uh, inbound at the meantime it's still under special arrangement as I shared with you earlier. This is the commitment uh, uh, for uh, you uh, from Qatar Airways. Uh, this is just another commitment uh, from our side uh, in case that you cannot uh, 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 travel as uh, uh, planned or you uh, cannot uh, or the flight is, uh, happened to be cancelled. This is not uh, only uh, the commitment from uh, Qatar Airways, it's also the uh, responsibility that we take care of you and protect you uh, when the flight happened to be cancelled. So in this, uh, for details that um, the tickets can then be uh, extended into uh, two years from the day of issuance. Uh, you can offer unlimited date changes uh, in case the flight is cancelled. And then uh, you can actually exchange for your travel uh, in the future uh, with the special voucher. If you fail to, uh, uh, to travel at this time due to flight cancellation or you change your schedule. Thank you. And this is also another uh, commitment about uh, safety uh, for the customers is uh, our utmost priority on board of the plane. Uh, you see the PPE is in place on, on board of the plane. Uh, we will equip the customers with the uh, face shield, uh, the uh, hand uh, sanitizer, and as well as the uh, gloves uh, as part of the amenities on board. So this is a... Uh, uh, very interesting session that I'd like to share with you or uh, to refresh uh, whoever already uh, flew with us before, uh, how to book an inbound flight. At the meantime, uh, we are taking people into Vietnam via the gateways of Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City uh, with the frequency as shared before that uh, we offer um, uh, daily service into Ho Chi Minh City and then four flights into Hanoi. But for this specific inbound flight, we only offer uh, once a week uh, into Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh City. Um, departure from uh, European gateways uh, will be every Friday uh, to Ho Chi Minh City from Europe, and then um, every Wednesday uh, to Hanoi. That is uh, the schedule at the meantime. And we will continue uh, to offer this service 
until uh, mid-December of the earliest. And after that, uh, we'll be subject to the local authority uh, once the uh, uh, final schedule is approved. But of course, we will update you uh, in the coming webinars about the progress. Uh, if you have any uh, trip planned after that, please share with us. About that, uh, also I will share with you about the uh, uh, the plan for the uh, for your uh, holiday, and then how to do that in case that uh, uh, the the schedule is not in place yet. Uh, the second step that please kindly email us a copy of uh, your approved documents uh, to see the full list uh, in the next slide we will share with you and then uh, you will need to uh, share or uh, make a booking with us and then uh, to proceed with the next step to get the hotel and uh, the transportation booking in place uh, the last step uh, we, is the okay to board approval will be shared with you uh, when we are granted by the local authority and then uh, your documents, uh, please prepare for your documents ready and then uh, get on for the flight. This is the into details, uh, the information and the uh, requirements of the paperwork that, uh, that is for your um, uh, reference. Uh, don't worry to uh, take any photo or whatsoever on the screen because uh, definitely the, the file will will be shared with you after the webinar, uh, and then you can have more information uh, and then get to know about this. You can know, also know how to contact us with, uh, and then uh, the details information for your trip uh, into Vietnam, Vietnam will be shared with the uh, specific timelines uh, that we will, uh, sh uh, we will uh, share with you uh, in the email or in your specific case and then specific date of travel. Um, by the way, uh, in order to uh, reply to um, uh, some members, uh, actually uh, they're on the screen, uh, uh, may I suggest that I will, uh, let, let me finish the presentation first and I will respond to each and every uh, uh, questions that you place on, on the um, uh, message box. Thank you so much. But about the process timeline and uh, deadline, uh, you will be uh, reading uh, from the file directly, so I will not uh, waste your time uh, to read from here. So I re really appreciate your attention uh, by looking into the specific file we will share. And also you will find uh, in the file the questions that uh, is actually relevant to your trip, and then also about arrangement for the inbound uh, into Vietnam. Uh, I'm happy to assist you uh, directly. I, I will share uh, the direct phone call uh, here and then my personal email uh, so that you will uh, know how to reach me in case you are not able to uh, uh, to reach the, the, the team. Okay, so now it's time uh, for uh, uh, responding to the message on the on the message box. Uh, presentation and now uh, Ruth had one question um, on international students. Uh, that are given allowance by the government to get to come in if they are granted by the ministry can they then fly inbound via qatar airways uh, well in this just to share with you uh, so far we receive about uh, 30 to 40 international students international students uh, coming into uh, vietnam already um, mostly they uh, came from france and uh, to join an international exchange program with the open uh, university uh, so i believe uh, more or less uh, it would be similar uh, to you, the questions you're asking. So yes, we do take uh, international students as long as they have approval from the local authority to come into Vietnam. Okay. And then I had a then there's a question from Bjorn with uh, the AHK. He's asking if the winter schedule has been confirmed outbound until March 2021 and for inbound it's only until mid-December and if that's correct. Uh, like I shared with you, uh, the outbound and the inbound indeed, uh, the plan is actually until uh, March uh, next year. But the slot confirmation for our flights at the meantime is approved until mid-December. So both outbound and inbound at the meantime can be considered as confirmed until mid-December. But for sure that uh, we will have uh, the updates for you in coming weeks very soon about uh, the coming uh, schedule for January. So for now, 
you yeah, can okay. uh, be confident to travel out of Vietnam uh, until mid-December. And for those who want to get into Vietnam at the meantime, uh, you can also do so uh, by mid-December at the meantime. Okay, so that means you can be confident about outbound and inbound traveling that the schedule is confirmed until mid-December. Yes. Okay, and that means that what you just showed was a an intentional schedule that you are uh, hoping to get approval for from uh, yes. from the authorities. Because still now we are still working on that, and uh, due to the constraint of the uh, runway in uh, both Hanoi and Saigon Airport, so at the meantime the local authorities are uh, reviewing and uh, uh, and uh, you know checking on the availability of the timing to see whether the slot can be approved for our required timing. But I'm sure that uh, that can be uh, assisted in time. We will be sharing this uh, hopefully in the next webinar or maybe uh, in your, the file sharing with you so that you can update to the members. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, I see a lot of other questions are coming up. Uh, I will leave that to the panel later on. Um, and right now, I would like to uh, to move on to the presentation of uh, Anthony. Thank you. Hi, Anthony. Yep, fantastic. Okay, so uh, hello, everybody. Uh, Anthony from the uh, Sofitel Legend Metropole Hanoi. Um, I look after the uh, for sales and marketing the Aqua properties here in Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos. Um, just a couple of things before I start, because um, um, the the title of this is "Can you go home for Christmas and uh, hopefully come back?" Uh, you can, uh, but uh, there is a certain amount of risk uh, that will go along with uh, any such decision. Um, <clears throat> uh, first of all. Um, I wanted to say a little pitch here that, of course, Metropole uh, has an amazing festive program this year. So uh, you don't really need to go out of the country uh, unless you need absolutely to visit family. We do have a number of great festive opportunities on the 24th, 25th, 26th, and the 31st of December. Uh, and if you're interested in those, please contact me uh, and I'll give you all the necessary information. Uh, a couple other things. DBAV, of course, offers the service paperwork, as has been already mentioned, uh, and will do an excellent job in helping you uh, service the paperwork that's required. Please note that any such decision to go out and come back will involve risk. Uh, the one thing that the authorities keep telling us is that everything is subject to change at any time. <coughs> um, and uh, also, with regards to uh, the information that is in the uh, newspapers, uh, please note that they tend to be either subject to some measure of error or uh, certainly delay in implementation if they're talking about uh, uh, certain travel uh, travel topics. Um, uh, a case in point with that is that, you know, um, one of the, uh, shall we say, short stay quarantine programs that's been adopted where people can quarantine for less time, six or seven days, uh, in a hotel followed by uh, at home or in a corporate residence. Um, this was tied together with a number of uh, flights that were supposed to be going into parts of China, specifically Guangzhou, uh, Taiwan or Taipei, uh, Japan, South Korea. Uh, and these flights were supposed to be, you know, twice per week, but they, they've not actually happened at anywhere near that frequency. And so there's been a lot of delay in the implementation of the program that was talked about so much in the press. So uh, we do, you know, we do advise that you make absolutely sure um, before you travel uh, of the situation uh, if you want to be sure to be able to return on a specific time frame or specific date. Um, the other thing that I would say is uh, as part of the decision making is to make sure that uh, in depending on your, your status in country, that uh, if you are dependent upon uh, strong partner relationships, uh, that those are, are correctly in place, because if not, uh, there is the risk that you can get stuck. Uh, and, and we do have a few folks uh, in fairly senior positions that have been stuck uh, overseas for several months uh, attempting to get back in. Uh, with regards to types of quarantine, uh, and I'll get to the two slides in a minute, um, you know, we have the standard 14-day quarantine, which is uh, 
which is required for international travel back into Vietnam. <coughs> um, we don't know uh, uh, until when that 14-day quarantine will be in effect. Um, uh, but our assumption is that it will uh, be in effect uh, for some time well into uh, Q, Q1, possibly even longer. Um, the short-stay program, which is the six, seven-day quarantine, uh, is, is uh, technically approved. Uh, and we as the Metropole have, in fact, received a permission letter to do. So we are authorized to, to take people on this program uh, from Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, Cambodia, Laos, etc. Um, uh, but we so far have only had limited uh, limited applicants. But please do keep in mind that if you are going to apply for the return on the short quarantine program, um, you, 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 if you are coming from a third party country, you, you have to have been in those countries for example, in Japan for 30 days to, to qualify for that program. So uh, it, it doesn't really help if somebody's uh, coming from a long haul destination and cannot afford to spend one month uh, in, in, in that third party country. Um, and the paperwork would need to be applied for the short stay program at the very beginning. You cannot convert a 14 day quarantine authorization into a six, seven day quarantine authorization well, uh, or short stay program. Uh, there is a program now for returning Vien, uh, Vietnamese nationals, um, and uh, Metropole has, in fact, re uh, finally received the, the license to take Vietnamese nationals. Uh, up to date, we've had relatively few, um, and certainly um, there has been a little bit of trouble of some of the camps releasing people to hotels, uh, but I think that will get more streamlined as the uh, time goes on. Um, another very important point is um, even if you have uh, a work permit or residence permit, uh, multiple visa, whatever you want to call it, you will still need to get an, a letter of approval from immigration. So uh, you obviously don't need the visa because you have it, but you need that letter of approval from immigration to be able to come back in, which is part of the natural uh, process. Um, so to, to go through the slides now quickly, um, the first one, and again, you can get some of this uh, information from, from various different sources, in, including DBAV uh, and uh, also the uh, AHK. So there are a number of different venues from where you can get the, the, the checklist on how to submit paperwork. Uh, but certainly you will need to have... Um, the uh, letter of requesting quarantine for entering the country to come back in the country, and you can apply. You can apply for this uh, before you leave, uh, while you are still here. This is what we are currently being told. Um, so, letter of request for quarantine after entering to Vietnam uh, with a with a quarantine plan. Letter to guarantee that the company will pay for hospital bills, health insurance. Uh, document to prove that the person is expert. Uh, passport, uh, business license, and delegation or, or delegation of power of attorney. Uh, obviously, the, the documents are submitted to the Department of Health, uh, and we've listed the address there. The Department of Health will then um, take the paperwork uh, and, uh, shall we say, do a letter on behalf of COVID committee for experts to enter Hanoi, uh, a letter from Department of Health to agree for them to stay in selected quarantine hotel, uh, hopefully the, the, the metropole, um, but uh, there are other options um, in the city. Um, reasons for purpose of entry, uh, names, uh, time of entry, duration of stay, etc. All those forms will need to be filled out as usual. Um, Department of Health will submit your documents to DOLISA to check first. Um, so they will do that. Uh, and then... Um, uh, the paperwork will come back, and then uh, once you have the uh, approval from uh, the People's Committee uh, and uh, Department of Health, and again, Department of Health takes care of that approval process, uh, then um, the uh, Immigration Department will need to issue the letter uh, that uh, you're okay to come in, uh, and then uh, obviously uh, you are good to go to come back into the country as long as the flights uh, happen as expected. Um, so, um, without further ado, I think that that's it. So, uh, we'll wait for the Q and a session for, for anything else. Again, I I'd like to highlight that, you know, it's not, uh, complicated per se anymore, uh, but it does take time. So please allow three weeks, uh, for the paperwork to be processed. 
Um, and um, please note that, of course, there's no guarantee uh, and there is a certain amount of risk in that anything uh, could, in fact, change. But again, the Department of Health, uh, once you submit your application there, will uh, the, the documents will, will go through uh, the Hanoi People's Committee, et cetera, to get full permission, uh, and then on to uh, immigration, which is the last, uh, the last stop. Uh, just to reemphasize, uh, despite the fact that you have a residence permit, you will still need that letter of approval from immigration. Um, uh, and um, there is currently no distinction in the process, uh, the application process, if you're based here. In other words, they, they, they don't treat it differently uh, than if you're applying from, from overseas. So the, the process, if you will, is essentially the same um, with that one step of the visa issuing being slightly different. Um, and that's it. <laughs> Thanks. Well, it's a very complete presentation, Anthony. Um, thank you for uh, for doing this. Again, this is a very logical uh, presentation with uh, the steps very well uh, described, and we will share that with all the webinar attendees later on. Um, so thanks for that, Anthony. I'm going to stop sharing your slides now. Um, I also saw that there are quite a few questions, um, and I propose that we will handle those with the three of you uh, later on. So I'm marking them as questions, and then they will come later on. Is that all right? Well, with your approval, I will go yeah. on to Evert. Can you please turn your camera on and uh, microphone yes, on? Um, good Ido, uh, thank you for inviting me. So, uh, shall I sh uh, start my presentation? Yes, please, if you can. Your presentation is about common misconceptions and about frequently asked questions that you get a lot. Yeah, right? correctly. That you hear a lot. So I just wanted to check, uh, are you seeing my screen um, correctly? I'm now sharing yeah. my presentation. Okay. Yeah, you're sharing your presentation. Okay, so uh, I'm uh, Ivert Visser and I'm uh, one of the board members of the Dutch Business Association and also vice chairman of Eurojam. And in this uh, position, uh, together with Guido, actually, we get a lot of questions, like, for example, we see today in, the, in our chat, and, and that's why also we organize this webinar. But even though we uh, share information, for example, today we have experts from Qatar Airways and uh, Sofitel Metropole, we still notice sometimes that uh, people don't fully get uh, the implications of what we're trying to tell uh, based on their situation. And that's why today I wanted to give a small uh, presentation in a little bit of a different concept. So I will just uh, highlight a few questions that we often get uh, about uh, traveling to Vietnam and also some misunderstandings that sometimes can happen. So the first one is that um, frequently we get uh, phone calls or messages from people that have been uh, traveling from Vietnam to Europe, for example, or who want to come from Europe to Vietnam, and they say, oh, I can't come back. But then often our answer is, well, uh, let's see, there may be options, uh, particularly if you are working in Vietnam, most of the time it will be possible for you to come back. There are a few exceptions, uh, for example, if you have a non-work related visa, that means, for example, you are married with a Vietnamese person, and you have uh, been, uh, uh, you have traveled from Vietnam back to Europe, then it may be a challenge. But it's um, important that, for example, you contact with uh, DBAV and then, uh, like Guido already mentioned, just to do a small investigation about the possibilities. But sometimes just a small piece of information uh, can help you uh, come to Vietnam. So the second uh, misconception is that there are no flights to Vietnam. Uh, so uh, some people still believe that there is no inbound flights, but for example, today we have uh, sharings from Qatar Airways that they have uh, one flight per week uh, for to Ho Chi Minh, which has the permission to, to carry passengers. And so here also uh, that there are flights to uh, from Europe to Vietnam. However, the um, important point, um, like Ms. Wendy already shared, is that you must contact the Vietnam office of the airline. I have seen a lot of times that for example, the head office of the company just books the ticket online, but then you don't get all the full information. So, for example, if you uh, book the ticket through the 
the Vietnam office of the airline, they will be able to uh, advise you, hey, please make sure you have these documents. They will send you the contact information where you can submit these documents. So they can help you also um, complete all the steps. So another misconception is, uh, well, no misconception, but the thing that really happens is uh, my flight got canceled. Um, so this actually happens often um, just before the flight, so for example, two days before the flight. And it happens uh, most of the time because you did not submit your documentation to the airline. And so the airline needs to receive your entry permit, your uh, COVID-19 test and other documents. And they have to submit the whole dossier to the Civil Aviation Authority for you to uh, be able to travel to Vietnam. But if you don't do that, then they have to cancel your booking because you are not allowed to fly. Yeah? You, the airline is not allowed to carry you because if you arrive in, 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 in Vietnam, you will be sent back. So often it happens that uh, the flight, uh, you, you get a notice that you can't fly, but in fact, the flight is still operated. And in that case, it's very important that you contact with the office of your airline uh, to see if you can reinstate the booking. In most cases, it's already too late. So, for example, most cases in the, your flight will be two or three days later. So you will be uh, put on the next flight. But then at least the process is in action. And that's why I reinstate the point I mentioned earlier, to keep in close contact with the Vietnam office of the airline that you uh, fly with. Ah, yes. So uh, people often ask uh, questions about what is permitted when they are in uh, the quarantine facility. And so, for example, could they go to the gym or the swimming pool or the lobby bar while they are in quarantine? But here uh, we have to mention, no, sorry, that you really have to stay in your room. And it is also very important that you uh, carefully follow the quarantine uh, requirements from the local authorities. Because in fact, the facility to stay in a hotel is a kind of a gesture of the Vietnamese government. And uh, for example, if there would be people not following the, the guidelines, it may cause some bad publicity and may cause the Vietnamese government to change the regulation. So it's very important huh, that you stay in the room and also carefully follow the regulations from the government. So how long before departure do I have to do the COVID-19 test? So actually the law or the regulation states that it should be uh, minimum three days before. But however, it's better that you check with your airline. So for example, Qatar Airways, they have a very nice schedule that you, for example, submit your um, COVID-19 test on a certain date so that they can have sufficient time to process your application and submit it to the government. So the um, timeline, which is imposed by the airline, uh, airline may be a little bit different than from the, the government side. So please check with your airline, uh, the local office of your airline, about the requirements. And also important to, to note that uh, you should schedule your test in advance. Uh, so for example, if you know that you have to take the test on Monday, then also please make an appointment uh, in advance for a test on Monday. And make sure that the test is a real-time PCR test method because uh, there are no many kind of quick tests and so on, but they are not permitted. It must be the real-time PCR test. So can I enter Vietnam without quarantine? And here actually, um, this is also what Anthony already shared. Um, especially last month when the Vietnamese government approved the regulations to allow uh, quarantine-free entry, a lot of media outlets started publishing that you can now enter Vietnam uh, without quarantine if you stay less than 14 days. And in fact, yes, the regulation is there. It, it is written in the regulation that it is possible. However, uh, there is uh, currently no case uh, I am aware of where the um, uh, people have been allowed to enter uh, shorter than 14 days without quarantine. And the main reason is, is that, first of all, the regulations published by the Ministry of Health are very, very difficult to implement. Uh, they have a lot of requirements about uh, where the person can go, what they have to do. So the regulations are not very practical. And secondly, on a lower level, the government also doesn't know how to enforce the regulation. So that's also to um, come back to the point from Anthony. Well, Sometimes in news reports, you may say, see a certain announcement, but uh, not, the announcement may not necessarily be implemented already. 
Indeed, and then the follow-up point is, of course, that uh, the news may mention okay, uh, um, things, for example, for, like uh, you can do quarantine for five seven days. So we can go on. Uh, questions but in fact, uh, that has been uh, now approved for one. about Due six countries. I can't come back Japan, to Vietnam Korea, after the holiday. Other My residence started to fire the during that time. Is, is possible to renew it from Europe? However, also here we see that uh, in practice it has not been really um, uh, uh, made possible yet. So, for example, it has happened that people have got an approval for a seven-day quarantine, but in the end they have to stay 14 days. And also, like Anthony mentioned, uh, you must remain in, for example, Japan for 30 days before you can even apply. So, it, in, in, in practice, it's not feasible yet. Ah, this is actually very important because many people they believe that when they have already a visa, I you, for example, I have in my passport a temporary resident card or a visa or a visa exemption, uh, valid until next year, so they can just fly out and come back. However, uh, fly out, yes, that is more or less similar to what it was in the past, but come back, no. Okay? So you still need all the entry permits. And it's very important that you check this carefully before departure, especially if your visa or uh, temporary residence card is related to a not working category. So, for example, if you are married to a Vietnamese and your uh, visa is based on that purpose, then there may be some challenges for you to Okay, come back. so this means so it's very important that you know this in advance. No, so you, you cannot can renew prepare. it from Europe. You either get a business visa or a visa, a visa on arrival. Ah. Is that correct? So how long does the entry approval process take? Uh, so as Anthony mentioned, um, it takes uh, normally around yep. uh, three Here. weeks. Okay, to moving leave. forward to the next. And you question. can start early, when will but Vietnam also open do many things already before visa? departure. So, for example, uh, you could already do your entry permit, uh, your immigration approvals, and so on uh, before departure, yep. so that you have some certainty that you can come back. And like Anthony mentioned, so there is still some risk involved. So, of course, the, the COVID-19 pandemic situation in, in Europe and US is changing all the time. So there may be some other restrictions. But at least when you prepare your documents in advance, you, have, uh, you don't have to undergo all the steps of uh, approval. So that was the end of my um, presentation, and I look forward uh, to participate in the Q&A session to answer more of your questions. Yes, I hear you. Thank you very much. Um, I will now load the questions before the online event. And I would like to ask of all of the yeah. panelists Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. No. So in this case, um, what has to happen is that um, he has to make um, indeed a, a visa application. But for example, DBAV can can support with that. So uh, there must be a new visa application, and he probably has to go to the embassy in his country to pick up this visa, or there may be visa on arrival. Um, now, Wendy, do you know if a visa on arrival is still possible at this moment? Temporary, right? So, for example, if people get promised that they only have to just stay, for example, a seven days quarantine or shorter than 14 days, then at the airport they can, photo, actually, they can actually be changed uh, again, ready? right? Because, and yeah. then uh, with a fee of 25 US dollars, that uh, should be exactly the amount of five dollars. Yeah. Okay. Because there will be no change. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the then probably in this case they could take the, the visa yeah. on arrival. From our experience that we still receive uh, people with the lending uh, uh, visa approval. Uh, recently uh, we have uh, uh, 66 yeah. customers uh, coming with the lending visa approval just last week. Okay, and coming back to the uh, yeah, when will correct. the borders open? Need, so either he has to go to the embassy, the regulations to have the ending date of 16 December, and then things will be reassessed. Um, 
Is that is that correct? Well, I would say technically it's there, yeah. But as we mentioned, uh, it has not been implemented yet, because the thing is that um, how how can they enforce it? Yeah? So, for example, when you do the 14-day quarantine, it's very simple. The, hey, you will arrive at the airport, you will be transported to your hotel. And in the hotel, they will do the COVID test. So it's um, a safe environment. But with this um, short-term uh, visa, or let's say the short-term stay, um, even the local government don't know. For example, if the business expert comes, should there be someone from the health department always with him or not? Or, Thanks. for example, if he arrives in the, his, uh, like, for example, he has finished Given the COVID flight situation and, uh, in Europe and America, and the America and the becoming the next morning has a business fall, meeting, will the, then who will bring him from, new, the, from the hotel to the you business reckon, meeting? Or do you think it's all this kind of, like, let's say, operational questions, which uh, there is no answer to yet. So that's why uh, I mentioned in my uh, remarks also that so far I have not seen any approval for the short-term visa or short-term stay. That's correct. And, you know, there's been a certain amount of pushback apparently from uh, from uh, some of the residents that, uh, you know, logically would, you know, if somebody goes in a hotel, does seven days and then goes home and, the, and, and that's in that, that particular district is now responsible to make sure that that person stays in their home uh, and they may or may not have the resources to do that. And of course, the neighbors get worried and, 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 and so on. So uh, it's a tricky one. Um, and so far, we haven't actually accommodated anybody Thanks. yet under Anything that program. That, uh, we have a few have bookings a ball, uh, uh, for the future that we think are under that program, um, but uh, we haven't actually uh, done it yet. Yeah, yeah. There were some cases, for example, from Japan and Korea that that happened. Um, so that also is one reason why now the incoming flights from Japan and Korea are also limited quite a lot. I understood, not formally, but uh, through some discussions, that now after the visit of the Prime Minister of Japan, that now uh, Japan we're all uh, to hope Vietnam that has been improving. So now they should be able to come for, uh, for a short-term uh, quarantine. But still, um, yeah, from Europe, for example, uh, most of our members come from Europe, uh, it will still yeah. be 14 days. Well, so the Civil Aviation Authority has indeed uh, published the, the notice uh, to the airlines that until at least 16 of December, uh, inbound flights will be uh, restricted. But uh, the past few months has learned that no, most of the time they will just renew this again. Until, right. Uh, um, so, for example, okay. 14 um, or so 15 or 16 December, they will announce, okay, we will do question, another then we're going months. on. When and do we based on expect what I know, the current quarantine uh, requirements to be lifted? Well, I'd say the, the normal new update that we're going to expect of everything there, we're going to move on with only happen when there is a vaccine uh, more often, so that you can uh, uh, safely we're say, okay, this person December, is we're going to get another so they can travel to the aviation now. authorities. We can sort of use that as an indicator of what the government is uh, deciding on, but uh, not very soon. That 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 could be the, um, uh, the summer, uh, summarizing answer. All right, um, then this mm -hmm. is. Regarding short-term visits, this coming so, from uh, Corbin. I think um, that can uh, the help with that procedure? Vietnamese authorities um, will yeah, keep the current policy could, could more or less the same. Apply for it, uh, so, for example, last month, low. they uh, published uh, quite a lot of new regulations, no um, which so we highly advise really clear. recommend everyone. I think they will maintain it in the in the similar way. Because, for example, you can still, for example, travel from India or other countries which are quite severely affected by COVID-19 to Vietnam. There are no blueprints. So there are no even if the situation in the US uh, or a very in dark uh, Europe gets worse, uh, uh, I, I go do in. believe that and, uh, we the are policy will stay moment. more or less the same. But of course, it could change in any moment. But my assessment is that it would be similar like now.
So, yeah. <laughs> um, so no, um, I agree. It's not going to get worse. They're going to maintain the current, uh, the current situation. Family, I mean, if you're, you know, if you're talking about in terms of business, uh, the, or, or shall we say, our 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 vision in terms of, a lot uh, of experts need to go back uh, revenues and stuff that we project for next year. I mean, they, you know, we, we are expecting to have predominantly domestic market probably for the first the first four to six months of next year. I mean, that's that's what we're predicting. But again, it's you know, it's a it's a guess. Right. So we really don't 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 know. We're hope, hoping for better. But that, that's what we think. Yeah. Well, that's not our worst estimate. Our worst estimate would be much worse than what I just said. Mm. But yeah, so I mean, really, you know, uh, um, lo logically, uh, you know, we, we do expect to see uh, some stabilization uh, and re relaxation from Asian markets, possibly as early as May, June uh, next year. And it could happen earlier. I mean, we don't know. Uh, and we certainly expect that, you know, the long haul markets, as we call them, so Europe and, and Americas, et cetera. To be, you know, to be at the back end, of the very back end of the year, uh, at least with regards to, um, you know, leisure travel. Um, but again, it, it's that's what you know, that's what we're sort of looking at. Yeah. Can I continue uh, on that one because? What are the rules on groups in hotel rooms? For example, if you have uh, uh, a partner and three children, Anthony, what what uh, what can, for example, Sofitel uh, Metropole do for those people to to keep them together during these fourteen days? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So also uh, this morning I was checking with different uh, agencies, different people. Hey, do you have any cases, any updates? But uh, so far I don't know any any uh, approval for short-term visits, uh, like I uh, mentioned. I mean, we don't, or the government actually doesn't know how to implement the regulation. Uh, so uh, there, there are many detailed requirements, for example, from Ministry of Health. Okay. Thanks. Okay, that's great. And home quarantine yeah. for big families is sometimes an option, right? That is only on. Uh... Well, uh, my take, maybe you need Anthony and Wendy can share. So, uh, going back will be more or less the same as it is now. Uh, so, you can just book a ticket and fly out. Uh, coming in, indeed, uh, you need to go, do yeah. all the approvals. Okay, thanks. And, uh, then the question about you testing, can do all does it need to be stamped by departure. each organization? So there could be many organizations, then you have, who does it need to be stamped with? by by lab right? Possibilities that you can come back. But, um, of course, when you are, for example, in Europe enjoying your holiday, it could be that there is a change, eh, that the government in Vietnam restricts the entry of foreigners or uh, whatever. So, uh, like uh, I would say, like ninety-five percent possibility that you can come back, provided that you make your arrangement before departure. Yeah, I, I would agree, and I, I think I think that it's absolutely essential that if you're traveling with family or children, rather, uh, that you get all that done uh, prior to leaving mm -hmm. uh, and prior to make the decision to get on the airplane, because the the risk is that the 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 regulation, so to speak, for the family members could end up being different than for the principal. And then, and then, and then that's not a good situation because then the family split, and we certainly wouldn't want. To, we certainly wouldn't want to see that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So I mean, the 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 basic regulation is 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 that there should be a, well one certainly for the central part of Hanoi, so the Hon Kim, Hon Kim district area is one person per room, and there is an exception uh, there for um, for uh, children. So, um, for example, if you have a family with three, um, depending upon their ages, yeah, I mean, logically we'd be able to put one adult and three children in one room uh, as long as there could be, it's a strange regulation, but there needs to be a two meter separation of the bedding um, situation. So um, uh, normally what we would do, for example, if we have two parents and um, two children, technically in each room, it's one parent and one child. Um, but, you know, um, um, the hotels, uh, at least Moving the, the, the five-star hotels, certainly, so uh, that have, would be uh, sort of us and Intercon have been, already, you know, pretty uh, clever at, uh, at at making it work for families. Media, so uh, we find a way. In some cases, uh, it absolutely does answer? require yeah. that you take two rooms instead of one. Um, uh, but, you know, we, we, we find a way to make it happen. Okay. Okay. Um, business travels for diplomat. 2021. Well, diplomat. You've shared that yeah. already, right, uh, Wendy? Yeah. So we need uh, for the home quarantine, then for the private return flights I don't have any, uh, any examples. 2021. We need for that diplomats. In some cases, it's possible, especially you can, if they have uh, their own it, if can't can't pound, it, right? so they live separate. If they are in apartment buildings, then also not. Yeah. Well, yeah. So we need in um, some media publications it was mentioned that uh, the test need to be stamped by uh, uh, authorities or something. But um, as far as my knowledge goes, you just get the official test certificate from the laboratory and preferably in English, and then that will be uh, sufficient. Maybe Wendy, do you have well, anything to add? That, uh, we also receive uh, uh, the results in different languages. And not only English, because uh, certain labs they cannot provide the English version. But then uh, we need to have uh, the translation at least from the lab. That is uh, just to satisfy that is the exact uh, method that was used, which is the real time PCR test. And if they can confirm that, then you're fine. Because now uh, a days uh, somebody uh, you know yeah. some labs uh, could even give them the online result which is uh, the, the online certificate is not in coming in the real paper. So in most cases, we will need uh, the, uh, customers to provide us with the real certificate so that they can copy, they can take a photo or scan and then send to us because we do not accept the online uh, email uh, or like uh, confirmation by email. By all means, no, it doesn't work. It has to be a real certificate. Uh, when so, Wendy, uh, I know that some uh, laboratories in Holland, for example, they issue just an email. So, uh, yes. I think it's a PDF document. Oh, uh, would PDF that be sufficient? It's okay because that is the certificate. And then it's actually transformed mm -hmm. into the PDF file yeah. and it is accepted. Yeah. Then uh, sometimes people cannot provide the English okay. uh, copy. Uh, to now is fine. But, but as long as it can be, you can read from there. It's RT-PCR stands for real-time PCR, and especially the result has to be negative. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. so moving on, <clears throat> I think this question is basically what the whole webinar is about, so I hope Henrique got his, uh, got his answer. Um, uh, that is, uh, number 13 actually, relates to the question about my, Melbourne, uh, right? Uh, when the commercial travel will resume is uh, not something that we can advise on. I'm sorry, I cannot, uh, uh, are there any uh, incoming uh, flights from China mainland uh, in the near future? Do we know anything about it? Nope. Yeah. Is there a detour you can take? Do we know? Well, at the meantime, uh, like I share with yeah. you, 
uh, we have the slots confirmed until mid-December. And then for you, how many flights Qatar will have in January uh, weekly? Continue to be approved until March. So 100% that we are on it, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that there will be no reason uh, why a local authority cannot approve for our operation into Vietnam. Maybe the timing will be yeah. as what yeah. we prefer uh, due to the constraints of the runway. But absolutely, yeah. we will have approval for okay. the local Moving on to the live the questions, I will do them from the so, I, oldest uh, upwards. One was uh, but, um, Sarah, time, our spouses that, uh, of experts eligible for with us, flight. Uh, on either uh, going and then return, so it, uh, it is up to your uh, intention, uh, whether you are only going one way or return only one way. Uh, because uh, we, you are protected by our extending uh, commitment uh, policy. So by all means, you are protected. And then we will place you in case the inbound flight is uh, uh, is still under a no time extension. We will protect you and then put you on the special flight, which will be arranged like uh, the weekly flight as we shared earlier. So you are safe. So uh, Wendy, so for example, uh, I want to travel back to Europe during Christmas. So I book with you a departing flight, for example, 15 December. I want to come back 15 January. Uh, would you be able to yes. issue that the booking for me now? The flights are still open for sale. But uh, like I shared with you earlier, and then you are also aware during the, the, the webinar, that the uh, entry permission into Vietnam uh, is due now until 16th of December and no one would know. But yeah. from our experience, most likely mm -hmm. it will be extended. And usually the extension will be for three months. Yeah. So uh, we can okay. expect um, the no time absolutely. extension. I'm also sharing a poll uh, right now. Um, for so if you people are still in the webinar, back, uh, please let, let us January, know how you would like uh, us to I update would, you with uh, a weekly webinar, monthly we webinar by it. email. But then. Um, um, like I Moving on earlier, to the we will, we are question always and uh, the questions special again. Flight to take customers in, so we will put you on that flight. We have got Sarah. Are there also requirements fly, yeah. uh, for flying in the direction of Europe? So for outbound flights, are there any requirements? You can just go to the airport and, uh, and fly out. Mm -hmm. No, so um, indeed uh, there was indeed, like uh, Anthony mentioned, the provision that uh, some, some flights would resume. But as far as I know, that has not happened yet. We don't think that we have uh, no. any information for that. I'm sorry. At the meantime, uh, I can only confirm for you, uh, we ha will have a daily service into uh, uh, mid-December for Saigon and four times weekly uh, until also mid-December for Hanoi. After that, then uh, we will meet you in the next uh, webinar or via the email. Yeah. Just briefly touching on this subject of Virginie, uh, are kids eligible to this inbound program as well? In short, Virginie, the answer okay. is yes. If you got your approval um, done, then you can sort of yeah, yeah. Uh, assume that it's right. Until Normally, I would say yes. That so, is. so that is yeah. the risk uh, if, you, if you are back in your own country. Because, uh, and there is that third COVID the wave where there, or something the happens, members, then it could be that all bets are off that, uh, and that you just are in your whole country like and stuck. Um, scenarios having said that, so that will mean that your your flight ticket and your hotel booking and so on, and there will be some loyalty from your from your suppliers there. But it's all in the eye of the in the for the, the foreign uh, uh, spouse, as the meantime, I mean the foreign uh, dependents. Question now, from uh, we still accept that li yeah, as a list of quarantine hotels in Hanoi. Um, yes, so we do have that. Confirm, we do advise uh, the Metropole Hanoi if that is out of reach for you from, for any kind of reason. Foreign, uh, um, are there any other hotels uh, from Sofitel in, uh, that are quarantine hotels the in the Hanoi region, uh, Anthony? We will not accept them because it was mentioned clearly by the local authority. Uh, the airlines cannot take them. So the Vietnamese, indeed, mm -hmm. they will have to go uh, and register with the Vietnamese embassy and uh, to return via the uh, 
the repatriation flight. That is what we have at the meantime. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for that. Uh, just to confirm that uh, yeah. for Qatar well, Airways, to, uh, at the be, meantime, be uh, we do not need a specific <laughs> COVID test. Uh, okay, well, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. Vietnam at um, the meantime, unless uh, let me see. the country that you are just traveling browsing to through the questions. Um, DeepMar on the COVID test, Secondly, which uh, date is relevant for the COVID test, the date when you actually work, make the uh, test or the date when the result is issued, the, like um, who wants to comment on that one? Because that will be under your travel document responsibility and that is subject to the uh, requirement from the specific, a specific country that you are traveling to. I'm talking about the Vietnamese because uh, these days we have a lot of uh, Vietnamese going on the, to those uh, European countries with the tourist visa, uh, but which I believe that uh, it is sometimes it's just not uh, proper yeah. at the meantime. So unless you're traveling there with the student mm -hmm. or the migrant visa, most likely it is uh, more relevant and then you will be accepted. For the tourist visa, please uh, check with us uh, before traveling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're moving on to the last question which is from uh, Lou, it's basically a statement. She says it's still possible for a dependent to travel alone as long as they have the entrance permit granted by the authorities. Is that correct? Uh, from the Accor group, no. Uh, we're the only one that uh, has authorization for quarantine uh, in the city. Um, the Novotel Halong Bay has uh, received permission for some uh, some large groups of uh, Korean companies, uh, conglomerates, so to speak, uh, coming in, but that's a separate story, and that's in for charter flights into Vendome. So we're the only one. Um, I mean, other hotels that come to mind. Obviously, Intercon has one block, uh, but we do recommend the uh, the we do recommend the uh, the Metropole, of course, uh, and then um, the Muang Tang Sala and Hua Bin Four Star um uh, hotels uh were the original ones and then there's been a number of other three star and a couple of four star added um and there's also the crown plaza thank you but the crown plaza is really really far Stay outside together. the city that's important during the time of a crisis i'm joking there Don't it's not that far <laughs> Yes. Yeah, uh, totally true. Actually, uh, last we were question based from Jeroen. If a dependent has the, all the paperwork they, to enter Vietnam, the can the Qatar then still refuse the passenger? Well, so I wouldn't see why, at, but uh, is that, uh, is that something that happens? We will uh, uh, consult you which date you will need to take the test and then which day you need to submit to Qatar Airways. There will be specific days, so no worry. You are fine. You will be arranged. Yeah. So here also, like I mentioned in my presentation, very important to, to keep uh, in close contact with uh, the Vietnam office of the airline uh, so that they can uh, carefully explain yeah. to you about and this which timeline. Is more that, uh, we realize that these days it's really a challenge for people who are come from Europe. 
especially like France or the UK. I'm not sure if uh, the Netherlands is having the same issue, but it takes a long, really long process to make appointment and to get the test results. So we surely understand that, and then we will uh, try to arrange uh, another or ad hoc flight to accommodate all your requests. So like mm -hmm. for, for next week, we will have uh, mm -hmm. more than one flight uh, weekly uh, so as to yeah. accommodate and support those who cannot get the result in time. So instead of having only one flight into uh, Saigon or Hanoi, we will be helping you to get onto another flight. Uh, that will be a special arrangement at this time for Qatar Airways. Uh, yeah, like I explained yes. earlier, there are two scenarios. Firstly, is the Vietnamese uh, dependence, and then the second is the foreign dependence. So, foreign dependence to yeah. now, uh, I believe we can still uh, accept them. Thank you. Uh, without, uh, Stuart, um, with the, uh, thank you, Anthony, and thank you. For the Vietnamese spouse, they have to register with the uh, uh, Vietnamese embassy. So, they cannot travel even though their names are approved. Maybe I can add that uh, my recommendation is always, uh, if possible, that uh, the family travels together. So that means the expert yeah. together with his family members, because there have been cases that um, the, when the expert came first, that it was difficult to get approval for the family members. And so uh, my recommendation always is to, to stay together for some extra certainty to make sure that your family also can come. Yeah, yeah, because indeed, it, uh, yeah, we have had many cases that families uh, had been split up uh, because of this case. So that's why my recommendation would be that uh, they, they stay together. And uh, indeed, if the family cannot come, at least the expert is still with uh, their family. It's a bit annoying for his work, but uh, I think family in this case may be more important than, than work. And uh, if, uh, if a, a dependent like traveling alone and uh, has Dutch nationality, uh, I believe that till now we can still accept them if the name is approved in the yeah. of the People's Committee. Yeah. Anyway, there is no change about that till now for the foreign uh, dependents, but uh, we uh, will never know, you know, because the local authority, they can change the rule anytime. Yeah. So please contact us beforehand if you really want to yeah. bring uh, someone and then uh, that one is traveling alone. Yeah, what I need to add is that in this case, it seems that they already have all the documents. So then they will be okay. Because the um, cases I was referring to is that, um, for example, the expert is approved, but his family members are not. Or for example, he the expert is already here and then the government does not want to approve the, the family members. But if the family member already has the documents, then uh, they are very uh, likely that they will be allowed to fly. It's taking quite a long time because we are having about uh, 20 uh, uh, dependents of the uh, uh, Finnish teachers uh, who already, we already brought uh, last August. Mm. But it took them almost uh, two months to process the work. So I believe that yeah. uh, it can still be done, but it takes longer yeah. uh, time than expected because the priority now is uh, the experts. Yeah, exactly. Indeed, the, the policy of the Vietnamese government seems to be very clear that indeed they want to have the expert. And indeed, if there are family members and they travel together, that seems to be okay as well. But if it's separately, then the, it seems that the family members have, have less priority. The process is more difficult, yeah. takes more time. Uh, Wendy? Um, this, we've come to the end of the webinar. We've answered all questions. It seems that we have uh, answered about 30 questions. We've done three presentations, and uh, we can only do that with with your broad and expertise uh, panel. So thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Anthony is actually on the phone now with someone. Mm -hmm. If you uh, want to uh, uh, 
uh, know more about your personal situation, then I highly recommend you to contact Ms. Chin Tran. She can also bring you in contact with Qatar Airways, Sofitel, and also with uh, Eurocham, for example, uh, to assess your uh, to assess your chances of getting out and getting back in. Of course, uh, Accor and Qatar Airways are also very communicative by themselves, so you will know how and where to find them. But an initial assessment is easily made, and Chin can help you uh, with that. She's very uh, uh, she's standing ready for you. Um, maybe um, an update on the poll. You know, maybe to. Uh, yeah, so yeah. actually, as DBAV, also one of the reasons why we invited uh, Qatar Airways and um, Anthony from from Sovital Metropole to to speak is that also from our working experience uh, that uh, both um, uh, the Metropole and Qatar have been most helpful when it comes to information sharing. Uh, that's why we also um, encourage people to to work with them and to their service. Thank you very much uh, for DBAV and DB and. Uh, for your invitation to join the, the this webinar uh, this is my uh, first time here so uh, i hope that uh, i already accommodated all your questions and uh, hopefully that uh, we will receive uh, uh, the questions afterwards yeah. well done thank you very much uh, thank you anthony thank you wendy thank you Ewart. and uh, See you guys uh, soon, either in a monthly or a weekly webinar. We will see what happens. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.